Welcome back. In this video, we're going to continue to talk about consumer credits. So how do you determine whether or not you have a good or a bad credit? Um, in the United States, um, the credit score is uh, one of the tools that lenders, banks, and credit card companies and so forth use to estimate a consumer's credit worthiness. So the important thing to know is that uh, credit companies are private companies and they all have their own proprietary mathematical models to compute credit scores. Uh, a single individual can have many credit scores. Um, your credit score could change depending on what type of loan you're requesting, so who is requesting it, and what it is being used for. Here are some key factors that affect your credit scores. Um, First and foremost are your own payment history. Did you pay your bill on time, uh, particularly um, uh, open installment bill and also past loans? Um, how much debt do you currently have? Uh, so unpaid meaning still outstanding debt. Uh, and then the length of credit history. So that is why not using credit does not give you a good credit score. You actually have to use credit and make on-time payment for a lengthy period of time. That is how you can improve your credit score. Uh, the other is the percent of available credit use, meaning that if you get approved, for, for example, $1,000 and you only use $300 each month and then you pay it off at the end of each month, that is considered a good signal to um, creditors or banks. Uh, the other is the type of debt and when is it started. So if you have a long history with a particular credit card and you have a good payment record, that will also be in your favor. Uh, and how many new applications do you take out? So every time you take out a new application, that adds to your potential liability. So your credit score can have many different factors affecting it. A common question that people often ask is, so what is a good credit score? Uh, first of all, remember that there are multiple credit um, scoring companies and each one of them use a slightly different scoring range. Think about the SAT score versus the ACT score. However, we can uh, use some rule of thumb. So in general, if your credit score is below 500, that is considered bad and you'll typically have a uh, a very difficult time getting any credit. Uh, between 500 and 600 is considered poor and you may be able to get credit but at a uh, fairly high interest rate or very high interest rate. A fair credit anywhere uh, around six, 600 to 660 is considered fair credit so that will give you um, a, a decent chance of getting a credit and pay a reasonable rate. Uh, if you have a good credit score you should have no problem getting credit. Uh, you will pay generally a good interest rate but not necessarily the best interest rate. If your credit score is over 780, over 800, then those can consider excellent credit and should have no problem getting loan and you'll be able to get the best interest rate available. So how do you get your credit score? There are different ways you can get your credit score. One is when you apply for credit um, and you get turned down, or if you have to pay a higher interest rate uh, than what was advertised, you can re you can request a, uh, a letter of explanation from the lender. Uh, in addition to that, most major credit card companies will provide credit score to their customer. Uh, in fact, you may get uh, text messages or emails from them all the time that, hey, your credit score has incre increased. We are happy to give you more credit. Um, and then also, if you are uh, working with a credit counselor, we'll talk about that more uh, in, in a little bit. Uh, credit counseling, they also, uh, and the housing um, authority will also help you obtain and review your credit report and also look at your credit score. The one thing that I do want to um, raise a uh, caution is um, credit monitoring service that offer free trial or free credit score, uh, particularly if they uh, lock you into a renewal uh, process, meaning that um, they automatically renew this free trial uh, or after the free trial is over. 
So um, the reason is that credit monitoring service um, may provide some value, but it's actually much better if you are proactive about reviewing your own credit report on a regular basis, monitor your own bank uh, statements, accounts on a regular basis, um, and set alert on your own. So if you do all those things, you don't need a credit monitoring service. What do banks do before they have all these mathematical model and credit scoring? Uh, in the past, the bank relies on these five C's of credit. And the credit scores uh, basically try to use uh, quantitative data to translate these five uh, C's into a single number. So the five C's refers to uh, character. So this is uh, a person's mental and moral quality. So how do you proxy for that? Again, each company has their own proprietary algorithm. Uh, but your employment history, how long you live in the same place, those can be a, pro a proxy for your character. Uh, the next is capacity. Uh, this is can your income cover the ability to pay? So your debt to uh, income ratio, your DTI, is a proxy for capacity. Uh, the third is capital. How much is your debt versus how much is your net worth? So the debt to equity ratio that we talk about will represent capital. And then collateral is whether or not a loan will be secure. So whether it's a, if a car loan, then it's secured by the car. If this is a mortgage, the loan is secured by the house. And then the last one is called conditions. Um, are there special events or circumstances that affect a particular person's ability to repay a loan? So conditions are special uh, circumstances that are mostly judgmental rather than objective. So when a credit scoring company developed their proprietary model, what they need to do is to translate the qualitative uh, characteristics into quantitative measures for their mathematical model so that they can uh, convert them into a single score. One very important societal question for us to also consider is how much our daily life uh, is affected by the credit score and the proprietary model that these credit scoring companies use. Credit discrimination oftentimes is hidden or even be unintentional, and that makes it really difficult to identify. So first and foremost, these credit scoring models are proprietary, and they may not intentionally discriminate, so even though these are computer models, but they can contain unintentional discriminatory components. Uh, an example is um, in the past, there's a practice called redlining. Uh, it stemmed way back from the 1940s. But what happened in redlining is that an entire neighborhood is uh, brought out by the bank. They literally draw a red line over the map and say, we won't give loan to this neighborhood. And it turned out that those neighborhoods are all minority neighborhoods. Nowadays, that practice is illegal. However, you uh, there's no law saying that uh, you do not that a zip code can be one of the uh, model uh, one of the input variable in the credit scoring model. So if you live in a particular zip code and if that zip code is correlated with a lot of people that have poor uh, repayment history, the model may make that zip code a factor in determining your credit score. And that is not illegal. And in fact, we don't know if the model used zip code as an input variable, because remember, those models are proprietary. So we don't know what data they use to arrive at that score. Um, what do we have as, uh, what can we do? Again, we need to know our rights. So consumers do have a right to demand a statement uh, and the reasons if their credit application is denied. So if um, the company has to give explicit reason why you are turned down for a particular credit request. So know your rights uh, as a consumer. So first of all, you have access to free weekly credit reports. 
and this is um, a pretty recent development. Uh, you can go to this website directly to get your credit report. Uh, do not just Google and use any website to come out because whenever we are doing dealing with finance, be very careful about the information that you give out and also the website that you interact with. So this is the annualcreditreports.com website. Uh, one thing that you need to know is that the credit report contains the historic data. So you should go and get your credit report to make sure that there's no errors on your credit report. But credit report is not your credit score. So you need to get your credit score. Um, you can ask for them, uh, but sometimes they may charge you for, uh, for, your, for getting your credit score. However, many banks uh, will allow you to give you your credit score for free. The most important thing is that when you review your credit score, uh, your credit report, and if you find any error, you can place a fraud alert. And if you, especially if you think that you are a victim of identity theft. And once you place a fraud alert, then the, even if um, new accounts get opened up in your name and someone take out loans in your name or make purchases on a credit card, um, in your name again that's not yours uh, you can dispute that also if you find errors in the credit report you can file a correction request with the credit reporting bureau there's a law it's called the fair credit billing act that requires a uh, timely prompt meaning redeem reasons corrections of errors on credit card bills and also at the same time protect a consumer's credit um, scores while they are settling the dispute. So th we talk about the, um, the pros and cons of using credit card versus debit card. This is one advantage that, uh, of credit card. You do not have a similar protection under debit card. Uh, another law that was passed is the Fair Debt Collection Practices. They, this act uh, prohibits debt collectors from engaging in unfair deceptive or abusive practices. So um, what do they mean by this is subject to interpretation. But um, harassment, like constant calling in the middle of the night, those not uh, or uh, threaten to bully or, or disclose this information to the third parties, those are considered abusive pra practices and are not allowed. Uh, Finally, the Fair Credit Reporting Act, so all these are uh, different government legislations, uh, this regulates the use of credit reports. So uh, if you, when you review your credit report and you find that some of these things are incorrect or out of date information, you can request them to be deleted. Um, in fact, you can uh, and you can get access to free credit report and you can um, correct errors. Uh, it also places limits on who can obtain your credit report. So you have to give permission. And most, report, uh, most information on the report is for the past seven years. So if you find any information on the credit report that's older than seven years, you can ask for them to be removed. Um, the only exception is that if you have filed for bankruptcy, then that can stay on your credit report for up to 10 years. Uh, and also, if you have loan amount greater than $75,000 or life insurance greater than $150,000, those can remain for longer than seven years. Other than that, any old information, you can request them to be removed. Finally, the Equal Credit Opportunity Act protects consumers from uh, being discriminated based on race or color, uh, religion, national origin, sexual orientation and gender identity, marital status, age, um, current or past income, and also from particularly for those from public assistance program, uh, and also past actions that are exercised in good faith under the C Equal Credit Opportunity Act. So, uh, However, even though you are protected by law, when if the algorithm uh, created credit score that are discriminatory but is difficult to prove, um, there is no core, uh, there's no recourse for that. So how can you uh, 
look for warning signs from lenders that might be practicing uh, discriminatory actions. What for some of these red flags? So first of all, if you are treated differently in person uh, than you are on online or on the phone. So you may be given one quote for an interest rate and then when you show up on in person, they say, oh, by the way, all these different things have changed. Uh, or they discourage you from applying for credit um, and they may steer you towards a type of loan that has a less favorable term, like a high interest rate, high origination fee. Um, of course, if you hear the lender make comments about um, any of the protected status, um, that is, of course, a warning sign. Um, the other is to refuse credit, even though based on their advertisement, you should qualify for the credit. This can be very common in car dealers. Um, and also, again, when you show up in person or when you're finally at the stage of closing the credit or closing the loan, uh, the terms change significantly from what you were promised. So all these are warning signs that you should watch out for. We'll end the video here. In the next video, we're going to continue with consumer credits. We're going to talk about how do you establish your credit, uh, how to improve your credit score, and also how to protect your credit. See you soon.